In this video, we're going to be creating an AI assistant with the OpenAI API. We're starting off here in the uh, OpenAI playground. So why do we do this instead of just using ChatGPT standard edition? Because it gives us much more control over the answers we're getting and the information we're asking it to check for us to provide those answers. And then consequently, we can connect to the assistant via our apps in the API and then we can provide users with the information they need as accurately as possible. So if you go to your ChatGPT API dashboard, so once you log in, this is where you end up anyway. So on the left, you've got your menu options and you want them when it says assistance and you'll have, if you've got any assistance in place, they'll be on the left hand side. And the one we are looking at is sports nutrition when I've set up. If you haven't got any, just click on the create and you'll end up with an untitled assistant with the information blank that you need to put in. So we're going to deal with this one. Now, you'll have to give your nutrition a, a sort of a friendly name rather than the actual assistant its name itself, which you will need uh, for the API, but you will give it a, a sort of a name. Then you give it some system instructions, which I'll come back to in a second. And then you have to choose which model you're going to use. Now I'm using GPT-40 Mini. I'm using that because it's A, cheap, and B, um, for what I'm doing, it's sort of sufficient, there's nothing particularly taxing about what we're doing here. And then you have to choose what tools you're going to give it. So we'll come on to the tools in a second. So let's just look at the pricing actually first. So prices per thousand tokens we've got there. So this is for your API and it says there, you can think of sort of a thousand words is about a thousand tokens. So we've got price per thousand tokens for GPT mini and you can see it's sort of fractions of a cent. It's it's fractions of a dollar. It's It's, it's nothing. Basically, it's really, really cheap. And to be honest, sort of the big 4.0 isn't really that much more expensive. So for what I'm doing in this demonstration, in this particular use case as well, there's it's going to be, you know, it's, it's literally peanuts how much I'm spending playing around with this. So just so you know that if you are going to put this out into the world, you just need to keep an eye on obviously your API costs. Come back to file search and code interpreting functions. As you can see, we're actually just using file search in this. It's a, the simplest way of doing this, and B, it is probably the most common use case where people are going to upload documents and ask the AI to interrogate them and give them some insight to what they say or to maybe paraphrase them or whatever. So that's the version we're going to use for this. You can also give it some specialist functions and use it as a code interpreter. I'm not covering that in this one. We're just doing the file search, although the functions especially I probably will do because uh, I think that's pretty powerful. You can probably quite a lot with that one. I will do that at a later date. And then we come into the model configuration here. So at the bottom there you've got the we're using the latest API or you can switch to the version one, but the latest version is the open AI beta assistance v2, which we're using. And temperature. So what temperature does, basically a low temperature makes the system more focused and predictable. And a higher temperature makes responses more varied and created, creative, basically. So if we lower that to about half of that, let's go 0.5. And then the top P is short for nuclear sampling. Um, basically what that means, if it's really low, the system will only pick from the most likely answers. And if it's high, it will consider a wider range of possibilities. Again, if we half that, so we're somewhere in the middle. So we're kind of sort of half creative, half accuracy, I guess. Although for this kind of thing, you probably want to be more accurate anyway, but that's what those two controls do. And then you've got the system instructions and the file search, which are the sort of the meat of what this thing does. So essentially on your files, what you can do, if we just, you can drag or drop, add a file, and the, there is a range of file types that you can use. So here we are in the OpenAI docs, and this is all the file types that you can use, although I have issues with uploading text files. These come back as, uh, with errors and also with 
uh, docx's i think um but looking through the forums and people have suggested converting your files to json and i have every time i've tried that it's worked i've also had no issues with pdfs and they're actually quite handy to upload your pdfs to be interrogated i should imagine that'll be a pretty popular use so Another file type which you can use, uh, and what we have got in this particular example is a JSON file which we have uploaded. So you can see there, we've got a file, and we've got Sports Fuel JSON, and that is what we are using. So what that is, this is a file of basically every sort of sports nutrition product on the well almost every sports nutrition product on the market i'm not going to sort of say it's all definitely all of them but it's certainly most of them with their nutritional values so caffeine that one particularly doesn't have any but caffeine salt carbs that kind of stuff whether it's vegetarian or vegan uh, and where that information is published by the um, by the manufacturers we've gone through and we've picked it all out and we've published it in this file and we've uploaded it to the um to the api to our assistant so we can ask it some questions about which sports products to use for your endurance sports needs basically is what this is for so that's the file we're using and then in terms of the instructions what we have done is sort of tell you what it is give it some example questions of what people might be asking and to query the file and then use your existing knowledge and provide a source for the answers if the user asks a more general question such as these. Now, this way I've done it. I'm not saying this is the correct way, the best way, whatever. So I've done it and it works. So this is something that really experience and just play around with it and keep changing the system instructions to get it to what you want it to do, basically. You can also get it to, as I've done in another video, which will be on the screen now, um, provide you the answers back in a specific format so you can extract the information easier so you're not using just text answers and you're actually going to display them in a more user-friendly visual manner you want the answers come back from your AI in a manner that you can extract them each time in the same way you want them to be consistent so therefore you need to tell the AI I need it in this format don't do anything else and it'll tell and it'll give you that so that's something you may want to include in your system instructions or indeed in your prompts which is what i have done in another app in the in the video i've just shown so you set up your assistant i've done it here on the dashboard it's obviously pretty easy to do uh, you can put multiple files in obviously and you can use the functions in the code interpreter so setting it up is actually quite easy and then you can play within the program which we'll do in a second but you can also set these up in the via the api so you can create an assistant and create a thread and add a message to the thread which i'm going to come on to in a second and then run the assistant and all of it can be done via the api without setting it up in the in the playground i think setting it up in the playground and then calling it from the api is much simpler if you ask me but if you want to set them up programmatically so your users can create their own assistants uh, that is something you can do programmatically here and the information's in the docs. I'll put a link to that in the um, in the description below. So let's go to the playground. So basically the way these work, you've got a thread and you have got a message. So you've got the thread is your list of messages and then you have messages going to and fro from the user and the and the AI in within the thread about sort of whatever topic sort of they're discussing and that looks like this so you've got your assistant creates a thread you run the thread the user asks a question and the assistant does a retrieval and gives you a response so let's go into the playground and let's ask so if you know which has the highest caffeine per serving And you see it's doing a run and then you'll get a message here saying gonna do a retrieval highest caffeine products at the moment are those two which contain 442 milligrams per 50 gram serving so if we go into the file and i'm not going to lie it took me a minute to scroll through and find all these because there's 
a couple of thousand products in here and just there we go serving size 442 for the caffeine level and then what we can do then is then ask our assistant so we then ask our assistant if these products are vegan so what is because because it's a message within the within the same thread it remembers obviously what it told you before i'm asking if these are vegan it's saying yes both are vegan which if you were paying attention a second ago they both are vegan true so that's sort of the beauty of doing this this way it's so much more accurate than asking chat gpt for information from the internet you know if you've got a, a set of information and data that you know is true and accurate then you can interrogate that and ask it all kinds of questions and it'll come back with the answers so this is what we're going to be using we're going to be setting up on the api so let's just let's clear this thread first and let's ask it a more general question so it's a pretty general question and it yeah you know, the actual true answer is it depends um but obviously chat gpt is not going to tell us that and what we've done with we cleared the um, we cleared the previous thread, so we've got a new thread. So we'll wait for the answer to come back, and this is where it's going to hopefully look to the internet for an answer or its existing knowledge, should I say? It's given us an answer and it's given us a source, and that is the general rule of thumb. But it's saying it depends, but obviously it's not going to be able to tell you an actual answer. You need to figure that bit out. That's kind of a personal thing. If you're into sort of sports, you'd know that and say that's cost us basically a thousand tokens approximately so that's you know again fractions it's really really cheap so if we say what is that equate to in carbs and then what it's going to do is going to run a retrieval probably going to give us the same source there we go Ooh, a different one there we go different source but at least it's given us an actual source so it's something we can actually check and then what we can do then if we've got that information We'll ask it how how many carbs are in goo gels, and hopefully it'll get this piece of information. And it's actually going to give us a whole list of them because I didn't wasn't very specific, but you can see it's going to give us three options, and it's gone and got the information from our file. So our sources for that. So. It got that information from its existing knowledge, provided a source, and then when I asked it a question, which was worded in those, as those examples, it went and retrieved that information from our file and returned the information. So that's how it works. What we're going to do, we're going to build a very simple app where we can just do this via the API. So rather than doing it by the playground, because obviously this is all well and good, but it's not much use to us if we're building apps, uh, we need to be able to get this information to our users. So that's going to be the next video. Um, we'll be diving into the API and we'll be creating threads, creating messages and returning the values to our apps and giving it to our users. Hopefully that was that was interesting. These things you can make them as complex as what you need to. You can add multiple files. I say you can do functions and code. And you can make these things really, really complicated. This is obviously reasonably simple. But in the same way, it's also quite powerful because we have got this list of products across the entire market of that particular niche. And we can interrogate them all and let users make informed decisions based on the AI, which is obviously a good thing. So... In the next video, we're going to dive into the API and do this in an app, as I said. So hopefully that was great and I'll speak to you in the next video.